This is the Savage Scientist Ed today, and I want to talk to you all about computer science versus system science. And that video is about to start. This is the Savage Scientist Ed right here, and I'm moving on to police talk. All right, so what I'm saying is that computer science. Oh, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell down there. You know, do your thing. Subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 426 subscribers, so I got a long way to go. So this is so what I'm talking about is computer science versus system science, and I'm driving. And you shouldn't do that. So a lot of schools are offering computer science degrees, and computer science is the study of algorithms, computational recipes to process information or process data into information, like databases, um, queries, SQL, and all that good stuff. All that uses information. Now uses data to produce information, and the difference between data and information is, data is, is um, is just facts or, or um, or, or subsets of information that doesn't have any meaning. And when you apply a meaning to that inf to that data, it becomes information. So, with that being said, computer science studies those and find out the best methods to produce information and that could be algorithms you, you get all the way down to processing data into algorithms and algorithms could could take the form of um avl trees um red and black trees and yeah that's just basic data structures course which is one of the most difficult courses in computer science and there's an algorithm class that actually go into implementing these and your favorite programming language, Java, C++, and then you learn about languages like Java and C++ and the differences and why these languages exist. All that falls under the umbrella of computer science. And then another part of computer science, which is my best take on computer science, is user interface design. And that is just, that is the most artistic part of computer science because you get to be a lot more creative than just writing code. You actually get to draw user interfaces and implement them with code. And um, that's normally done through um, API, or that is application programming environments such as Microsoft Visual C++ and um, all the Apple uh, programming interface, I forgot what it's called. Or um, even uh, Linux and Unix as they own uh, API, which is normally built into languages. But um, without saying all that, um, they are also the assembly language, which is the underlying um, language that that are most most um, compiled languages. Which is compiled just means you're translating this language into machine executable code that the computer is that you can actually execute. That's why whenever you take your code and it produces an executable file, that means it's compiled into an executable code, executable file. So that is just another way of saying that your, com your program is ready to be launched in uh, Microsoft Internet, I mean Microsoft Windows. Uh, it's a um, file on the, on what is it, uh, on, on the Mac desktop or Linux. So I, I'm always, so we talked about that. So let's talk about system science because I had to go through all that to, ex to explain computer science. System science is the art of taking, taking um, computation or computer science elements and combining them to make things better. It's almost like engineering. And system sciences, system scientists are great at making something out of nothing or improving because we look at we look at we I mean well as a computer scientist most computer scientists are system scientists because we might be interacting with um, stuff outside of the computer science arena I mean that could be is that could be computer networking um, creating plugins for network statistics and analyzing networks or if you're a chemist, sometimes you might have to use computer science or algorithms to um, find out the concentration levels of certain chemicals, and that is done through computer scientists 
Oh, you know, you can have some, some great chemists who know how to write code, but you have instrumentation that you have to learn the APIs to make that instrument work with that um, computer software that you're designing. So that is kind of where system science come in. It is actually making things that don't normally go together work together. And my thing is, when you're driving your car down the road like this, that becomes system science because these roads are now becoming a you know with the with the advent of autonomous vehicles, system science will be even more important as we put computers in cars. It, and that is also called embedded technology, but when you look at it, you're dealing with a mechanical vehicle and an electronic computer and to get those two things to actually interact with each other all under a same under the same discipline and you know mostly um, interdisciplinary science becomes system science but interdisciplinary studies just you know you don't you don't really tie two things in as closely and that's the big difference between these two fields so computer science and interdisciplinary science and um, system science are all related and they could be interchanged almost whenever it depending on the way you do your interdisciplinary studies so um, a system science might be somebody who who um, looks at um, construction which is I'm talking about over there so they might look at the construction field and figure out ways to make it so you know we put a computer on a crane and now the crane is is autonomous and it could build specific types of buildings to get those systems to all work together you will have to have some type of knowledge of system science and I think computer science is not taught from a system perspective it is taught mostly from a programming perspective and that is where we need to start working if you agree with this video give it a thumbs up if you don't agree with it still give it a thumbs up no I'm just playing with y'all so this is Savage Scientist Ed. Um, so until I make my next video, y'all stay safe, be good, stay out of trouble. Tenfold.